Hi, my name's Steve Griffiths and I'm a science teacher. I want to explain to you how your son or daughter is going to be doing science this year at school. Firstly, I want to explain how a normal classroom sort of operates and then explain to you how it's going to be different this year. So in a normal classroom in this group learning space, classically involves the teacher standing at the front of the class and delivering a lesson, uh, explaining content, uh, delivering information to the students and they write it down and perhaps at the end of the lesson they have time to start practicing, answering questions, doing problems and worksheets and maybe doing an experiment. But then at home they're usually assign homework tasks that reinforce that learning. So questions, worksheets, etc. Often the trouble with this approach is that the teacher is not at home to be able to answer the questions for the student. So often students feel that they can't do the homework because they don't know where to go, they don't know where to start. Also we find that the teacher standing out the front talking to the group so every student is an individual and they learn at a different rate and they learn in different ways. So it might be appropriate for maybe two or three of the people in the class, but for others it's too fast, for others it's too slow. So the idea with flip learning is we actually flip the individual and the group learning spaces around. So it usually involves the teacher making videos of what they would normally deliver in front of the class. So instructional videos. The students watch those in the individual learning space. So often that's at home for homework before the lesson, but sometimes it's actually in class as well, watching videos with headphones in. It's still an individual learning space because they can pause and rewind and take, take as long as they want to watch the video. So they're getting the content in their individual learning space. So that means when they come to class, the classroom or the group learning environment is an interactive and dynamic learning environment where students are learning from each other. Students are learning one-on-one -on -one with the teacher. The students are doing activities and experiments. Uh, and what we find is it's far more engaging for the students. They can learn things at their own pace and then they can apply them in the class where they've got their teacher and they've got their peers to help them. For this to work, it's very, very important for the students to arrive at class with their laptop computer every single lesson. It needs to be charged. They also need headphones, good quality headphones that they can have in their bag ready for every single lesson. Often there is homework assigned, but that homework, do not be surprised if that homework involves watching a video. They have a number of different ways that they can access the videos. The most important way is through what we call the Learning Place. The Learning Place is part of Education Queensland, but it's web-based, so they can access it anywhere where they've got an internet connection. But if the student can't access it via that for whatever reason, they can also access my videos via YouTube and also via ClickView. And ClickView they've, they've got a, a subscription to as part of the school. I also ask students if they have any problems with being able to access the homework that they need to send me an email before the class, you know, that night, send me an email and say, Sir, I haven't been able to access the video. Please uh, help me out. And I'm either going to email them the video, send them a link, problem solved for them. Email the teacher if there's any issues. I understand there's some students who don't have internet access at home. What we can do, though, is arrange for all of the videos to be available uh, on a USB. Um, and, and so the students can access those, so there's really no excuse. When the students watch the videos, they actually need to do something called WISC. And that stands for Watch, Summarise, and finally, Question. It's not enough 
for the student to have the video on in the background whilst they're watching cat videos or uh, playing Minecraft. They need to have all of the other tabs closed and focus on watching the video. I want the students to watch the video twice. The first time, just watch it through without distractions, just listening. The video is only going to be two, three, maybe four minutes. And then I want them to watch the video again. And the second time, I want them to pause and write a summary as they go. When they get to the end of it, I want them to have a question, either a question they want to ask their teacher the next lesson that they don't understand, but it might also be a question they want to ask their buddy, you know, I understand this really well, I'm going to have this question I'm going to ask my buddy. That's fine, but I want, we're going to check when students get to class the next day, is that they've watched the video, and we've got evidence of that because they've written a summary and they have a question. It's very, very important for students to do this homework for this group learning environment to be able to work. This pr approach works exceptionally well. We did some research last year and got perceptions, students' perceptions, and the, the students' perceptions were overwhelmingly positive. We also tracked student performance, and we've seen a significant improvement in student performance since we've been using flip learning. It absolutely works. It works only if students come to class prepared with all of the equipment they need, plus having done the homework. So I ask for your assistance in ensuring the students have these things and that they're doing that homework. I'd really, of course, if you've got any issues, please contact your teacher directly um, via email, and they'll be very happy to help you out.